let's do a high yield surgery review that will help you score even more points on exam day. A baby has an easily reducible 1 cm mass in the umbilical region. It is covered by skin. The bulge is most pronounced during crying. What is the most likely diagnosis and best course of action for this patient? Observe for spontaneous resolution. So this baby most likely has an umbilical hernia and surgery is often not recommended until around age 5 for a persistent hernia. But of course, if the hernia is bothersome or causing complications, then surgery would be indicated then. A 58-year-old male has a past medical history of diabetes, hypertension, chronic atrial fibrillation, and chronic kidney disease. His current medications are lisinopril, digoxin, warfarin, metoprolol, simposatin, and insulin. An abdominal x-ray shows free air under the diaphragm. What is the best initial treatment for this patient? The best initial treatment for this patient would be fresh frozen plasma because you need to reverse warfarin-induced anticoagulation. So typically, this patient would require preoperative management such as an NG tube decompression, IV fluids, and antibiotics. But ultimately, he would require a emergent laparotomy. What is Cushing's reflex? Hypotension, bradycardia, and respiratory depression. So these symptoms or signs indicate elevated intracranial pressure. A maid presents with a three-day history of right knee pain and swelling. She has mild swelling anterior to the patella, along with faint erythema and sharp tenderness. Range of motion, however, is normal. What is the most likely cause of this patient's acute symptoms? Pre-patellar bursitis. It's very important to remember that if a patient has a red, swollen, painful knee, then you have to suspect that they have septic arthritis. And the most common cause of this is due to staph aureus. And you can confirm the diagnosis with doing a cell count and gram stain. If you do these tests and they are negative, then you can manage the patient with activity modification and NSAIDs. However, if it is positive, then you have to go on and do drainage and systemic antibiotics. What is the earliest sign of an infection of a burn? A change in the appearance of the burn, meaning that say that it was a partial thickness burn and now it is a full thickness burn or the loss of a viable skin graft. After blunt trauma, an x-ray shows blunting of the costal phrenic angles and opacification of the hemithorax. What is the most likely diagnosis? And here is an image of that x-ray. Hemothorax. So when a patient presents after a blunt trauma and they do an x-ray and you can see the blunting of the costal angles and obvious opacification, meaning that there is some fluid in the lungs, then suspects a hemothorax. A 27-year-old female experiences second and third degree burns over 15% of her body surface area. 
or pharynx shows erythema and scattered blisters. Blood carboxyhemoglobin concentration is 20%. Temperature 98.6, blood pressure 92 over 60, heart rate 100, respiratory rate 28. No abnormal sounds are heard on lung exam and the abdomen is soft. What is the next best step in management? Endotracheal intubation. Which method of cardiac catheterization leads to fewer local vascular complications? The radial artery has fewer local vascular complications compared to the femoral artery. A 23-year-old male soldier in basic military training presents with foot pain for three weeks. Initially, the pain only occurred with activity, but now it is also present at rest. Swelling and warmth of the foot is present, as well as point tenderness over the second metatarsal. Plain films show a hairline fracture of the shaft of the second metatarsal. What is the most appropriate next step in management? Rest and analgesics. It's very important to note that in patients with a stress fracture of the fifth metatarsal, they are at an increased risk of non-union and should be managed with casting or internal fixation. A patient experiences chronic aching pain in their buttocks, hip, and thigh muscles. It's associated with walking. The patient has decreased femoral, popliteal, and dorsalis pedis pulses in both legs. What additional symptoms would the patient most likely complain of? Impotence. So this patient most likely has Lariche's syndrome, which is an arterial occlusion of the aortoiliac junction, and they classically present with a triad of bilateral hip, thigh, and buttock claudication, impotence, and symmetric atrophy of the bilateral lower extremities due to chronic ischemia. A patient has an anal fissure with a skin tag. In addition to stool softeners and sitz baths, what is the most appropriate next step in management? Topical lidocaine and nifedipine. So note that surgical intervention such as a lateral sphincterotomy or fissure excision is indicated for fissures that are refractory to medical management. So you want to opt for medical management first and then do surgery. A 16-year-old male has a displaced midclavicular fracture. Auscultation reveals a loud brewery just underneath the clavicle. What's the most appropriate next step in management? An angiogram. So you have to do an angiogram because of the proximity to the subclavian artery and brachial plexus in this patient's injury. Two days after an appendectomy, a patient is noted to be icteric. Liver function tests, however, are all within normal limits. What is the most likely diagnosis in this patient? Gilbert's disease or Gilbert's disease. So whenever a patient has a flu or they did surgery, and they are now icteric and all their tests are normal, then suspect this disease in this patient. 
What organism is most strongly associated with nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Epstein-Barr virus. And a quick step one review that may show up on your exam. Is this virus a DNA or a RNA virus? Leave your answers in the comment section below. And if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to pop the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. Which of the following drugs can cause adrenal insufficiency? A. Propofol B. Atomidate C. Halothane D. Nitrous Oxide B. Etomidate. So this can cause adrenal insufficiency by inhibiting 11 beta hydroxylase. Those who are at greatest risk of developing this condition are those who are critically ill or who have sepsis and the elderly. Which of the following drugs can cause hepatotoxicity? A. Propofol B. Etomidate C. Halothane or D. Nitrous Oxide C. Halothane So, halothane can cause hepatotoxicity, which may lead to liver failure. And adult women are at greatest risk for developing this condition. And to learn more Hayu concepts for your exam, just click this video right here.